Yeah, I've got to admit, I mean, right now, in my life, at this stage in my life, I am what I'd call a fair-weather golfer. Oh, maybe I should be more grateful. Look, it's a great day compared to yesterday, and there's plenty of golfers out there, particularly Canadians who watch the channel, who have had to put the clubs away for the winter, so I would absolutely hate that. So maybe I'm not a fair-weather golfer after all. But where I'm going and what this video is about is a possible, yeah, possible, but a real possible change in my irons. Well, for those of you wondering, yes, they were sheep on the side of the road. The journey up to Hollywell Golf Club, it's always an interesting one. Now the idea of switching into new golf clubs to improve your golf game can be often very unwise. But having said that, I also believe if you get your golf bag set up correctly, then some clubs can have a profound effect on your performance. But what if choosing golf clubs to make the game more difficult? could in fact make you a better golfer. Right, so clearly I need to do some explaining and let me start by showing you what my current irons are. They are of course PXG Gen 5 P model. They're almost fall into that category of a game improvement iron. They've got a slight bit of bulk and mass about them. They're slightly forgiving. They're everything I would want from an iron at my level of ability. Or are they? So the question is, why do I choose to play a game improvement iron, a wider width sole, a thicker top line? Well, because basically what this club manufacturer tells me is that it's more forgiving, i.e. if I don't hit the center of this club face, I won't get huge drop-offs in terms of performance. So in theory, that's supposedly helping my game. But is it? Because by playing these irons, I really do question the fact that, am I kidding myself? Am I getting too much help, too much forgiveness on my bad shots? And should I be looking to change my irons? Based on that shot, the answer would be yes. You see, the irons I've been playing in recent weeks, well, uh, supposedly at least, not forgiving. And uh, why am I choosing to play a less forgiving iron. That seems a little bit silly. Nice control and sit. And I am wondering by swapping to these irons, will it ultimately make me a better golfer? And in today's video, I hope to put that theory to the test. So the irons in question and up for deliberation are another set of PXG irons, but they are in fact their forged offering these 317 ST blades, which are, well, I just hit that eight iron into that previous screen, a little bit dirty, but I'm sure you can appreciate it's a decent looking iron, but it's also very thin in terms of top line and also from underneath. That width of sole is very small. It's a blade after all. It is, like I said, supposedly not forgiving. So why would I swap this chunky effort that is my current iron into that visibly smaller iron at a dress less forgiving. But for me, for one reason and for one reason only, and that is to improve the quality of my strike, the quality of my iron play. And the reasoning behind that is quite simple. So we're gonna do a very simple on-course analysis of these two clubs. I've bought exactly the same wedge through to six iron out on course, and we'll hit a few shots with each of those irons through the bag. And ask the question why, when these are quite visibly different and addressed, would I consider going for that smaller model? Well, it is, of course, down to the fact that I believe that by getting good with a set of blades in your hand, that if you were to step up into these things, the game would be a whole lot simpler. But it also means you've really got to concentrate your efforts and make sure you're striking that ball pure and out the middle. So that's my theory. But what happens in practice when I shot, hit shots side by side? How much are we losing in terms of distance? How much am I losing in terms of forgiveness? We'll start here, shall we? Okay, so first thing to mention is they've both got exactly the same shaft in. They differ in terms of their strength of loft, which is on screen for you now. So we're expecting to see just a difference in terms of ball flight, in terms of launch angle, and then overall carry distance should be longer 
with the Gen 5. Start off, that was two 7 irons playing into what is a sort of 145 flag. Um, we will go and see where they have finished. It looks like the Gen 5 iron has gone long and straight. It was very much at the flag. The blade was a bit of a pull down the left-hand side, but I would imagine from a distance perspective, nothing different. The only difference was the quality of my swing because they felt very, very similar indeed. Okay, so just showing you where they both finished, we've got the Gen 5 is up there and just there is the blade. We've probably got about maybe not as much as 10 yard difference in terms of carry, but like I said, nothing to split them in terms of forgiveness at least. So next up, it was two six irons. I just want to try and show you again, if I can, just the difference between those two in terms of their size. It's quite considerable. And uh, when you look down at a dress, yes, it does sort of, it asks questions of your game. And I kind of like that, but I've also always liked the smaller profile. But anyway, the two six irons that I hit were decent strikes. And I'm going to show you very, very soon where they both finished. And again, there's not a lot to split them. Okay, so ball on the left is the blade, ball on the right is the Gen 5. I would say pacing that out, there's probably about six or seven yards at best to separate the two. The big question for me is not about where they finish in terms of distance, because we already expect the Gen 5 to be longer. The question is, was one more forgiving than the other? The answer again was no, not when you're finding the center of the club face. And it seems to me, that my game in terms of irons is more often than not finding that and I want that to be something that I continue to do and not rely on the performance and forgiveness of an iron to cover up my shortcomings let's say. So how many of you have been in this predicament yourselves where you uh, maybe just challenge yourself maybe it's just at the driving range with a, a smaller set of blades an older style golf club let's say where it really relies on you being uh, well performing better than your game improvement irons might allow. Does that make sense? It's something I've done for quite some time and I firmly believe that it improves the quality of your strike and it improves your concentration levels a little bit and focus and making sure that you're finding the center of that club face. Anyway, we're gonna switch it down to the short end of the bag. And it's at the shorter end of the bag where I feel there's an even added bonus in terms of playing blades or better player's irons if you like. And that's because the sort of more compact style of head shape, for me, the pure forged iron, which these 0317s are, gives me the things that I want in the short end of the game, which is incredible feel. The more compact size and profile, the more refined head shape gives me that bit of finesse that I'm looking for around these kind of things. I don't really want to be swinging some big club at this kind of shot, whereas in the long end of the bag, maybe that makes a bit more sense and really what that should translate down to. It's just great. It, it, well, first of all, for me, it gives me confidence. That's pin iron, a really decent shot. I, I, I don't understand why and I never will understand why I get more confidence out of playing blades in many ways than I do out of playing what you call game improvement irons. Certainly at that short end of the bag. And I've done this for multiple years now, whereby I talk about mixing sets up and playing players' irons down that short end of the bag and then going into game improvement irons in that longer end of the bag. And maybe, maybe that is a solution. And do you know what? I'm going to end the video there because I've played a long iron, a mid iron. We've played a short iron. There's nothing much more to cover. What did the video find out? Well, hopefully what it explained, well, it did for me at least anyway, was the fact that Forgiveness is only an issue when you're looking for it on when you're off center hits. That's the first thing. My strike with irons is, I think, the best part of my game. And I think I do find the center of the club face more often than not. And therefore, the thing that the game improvement irons of Gen 5 give me, I don't really get the benefit from because ultimately I find the center of the club face more often than not. I still believe that I would want more forgiveness down the long end of the bag. And maybe that's where these kind of... Uh, the idea of that split set is an ideal scenario. But I would certainly happily make the trade off in forgiveness for feel and finesse down that shorter end of the bag. And what I found today is that 0317, certainly from 789 wedge, looks stunning at a dress for me on my eye, and the feel out of them is absolutely superb. So I think for the time being at least, we will carry on with a bit of a mixed set maybe. 
and I'll see how I get on and whether or not that's something we take forward into the new year. But for practicing through the winter, I certainly don't think it's gonna do me any harm. But what I wanna know is that any of you consider doing exactly the same. Right, that's me done. The one thing I will say is I cannot believe how dry Hollywell Golf Club is right now. Uh, so if you're looking to play some winter golf in North Wales, make sure you get down to Hollywell because I'm playing in the field as they call it. And over on the sort of more Heathlandy Link side it is absolutely bone dry. Really surprised considering just how much rain we've had over the last few days. So yeah, come along, join me. Get yourself to Hollywell Golf Club. Anyway, I'm going in now for a warm and a brew. And I'll see you soon.